securities, a lot like car insurance, most people don't want to pay for it. I agree with that. Some people don't well, pay for it. So here's the thing. For me, I, I don't mind paying for car insurance because it means that if I destroy my car or I get stolen, I get, you, you get your money back and then it's fine. It's like it's sort of an investment. The thing that I don't like about it is I'm not going to read the massive 50-page long legal document they send you in the process of getting said car insurance. That's the, like, I'm fine with it happening, like yep. the payment going out to get it. It's everything around it. I, I, I like. never read those agreements. I, I'm not even committed enough to read the iTunes license agreement. So. And yeah, that's basically exactly the same thing as I've done for my site. Like the whole point of SSL is to keep users secure. And like Service Worker, it does actually make a lot of sense. Yep. Because like you're gonna have something controlling a page in the background, and if someone can get in the middle and then like swap out Service Worker, like adiasmoney.com forward slash blog could go straight to my site. My blog posts. What? I could steal all your ad revenue. If, if, if anything, it would probably be an improvement in content quality. Not true. But the, I can understand the main point of it. The problem that I have with all of this is like it's really hard to learn about SSL. A, like there's tons of old content. Yeah. Like this is how you set up SSL on your site. It's useful, but it's old. Yeah. And then secondly, there were so many different factors to the whole thing. So when I was trying to, to set this stuff up on my site, and it, I don't even default to, to HTTPS just yet because there's still, like, I'm, I still don't know how to, to handle all the mixed content security warnings I'm getting from the third parties I'm loading, like, widgets and share buttons in from. Yeah. Um, and it's, like, all the tooling around this is sort of a minefield to me, and I find it, I find it hard to navigate those waters. So I've literally, I, I've done numerous, like, steps into how I got it on my site. And even then, like, I've got issues. So the first one was like SSL Labs. You just bung in your URL and it will look at your site and figure out whether like HTTP redirects to HTTPS and just the configuration of HTTPS on your site. So if I bung in gauntface.com in SSL Labs, I was at one point getting a glorious A+, which I was very happy about. And now I've been downgraded to a C. Have you changed your site? A lot. No. So Has this is a way of. So, the, so the, what's happened is, is there was the Poodle vulnerability. Yes. And I think that's basically all through SSL three, and I've still got SSL three support on. Uh, oh, I see. On my site. So even though everything is actually doing really well, like hundred and nineties for like the scores on each like top level topic, they've capped me to a C because of SSL three and Poodle. I guess it's cool that they're, they're keeping it up to date. Yeah, so this is the nice thing is you can keep on regularly running through this and it will keep it up to date and track everything. Yeah. The really nice thing with this is it's really good. Like It's a ton of information, like possibly too much, but at the same time, it, things like protocols, it's saying, do you support SSL2? No. Do you support SSL3? Yes, it's insecure. These are the cipher suites that you have. And it literally, if there's one particular thing that it's like, this is actually really like a bad practice, it highlights it and then you can at least go and Google and find out the problem. So this was the first thing that I found. I was like, sweet, these are all the places that I suck and overall I'm doing bad, well, or, or whatever. The best thing that I found after this was the Mozilla SSL configuration generator. And this thing is a godsend. Does it do all the work for you? Yes, so good. So basically one of the issues that I have was like, how do I know what a good SSL cipher suite is? And SSL Labs tells you good and bad. The problem is it doesn't necessarily tell you the right names to put in your configuration file. Enter a Mozilla SSL config generator. So you can select like Apache or Nginx. You can select what sort of browser support you want. So you can be like really harsh and be like, if there's an old browser that requires XYZ to work, you can just basically say, sorry, I'm not going to support that yeah. um, for security reasons or whatever else. And it literally just gives you the, conf the config file, like everything just set up. That's awesome. So I'm looking at it and already the SSL protocols doesn't include SSL3, which is why I'm now set to to Poodle. So all I have to do is literally copy this back over and I'm good to go. Then, very recently, the past week or so, yeah. someone introduced me to httpsecurityreport.com. Httpsecurityreport.com, okay. What does it do? So it literally is very similar to SSL Labs. It's kind of nice because it gives you an even higher level like overview of where you're doing well on your site. But this looks for slightly different things. Like I've never considered the content security policy of my site, which is things like if you're pulling in third-party resources like Google Fonts, you can basically say, if I have a CSP policy which excludes that, it won't load even though I called it in on my web page. 
So with your mixed content thing, you could sit there and say, CSP is just adiasmoney.com, that would all just get shot down, which is not what you want, but it's an interesting point that I've never even considered as a thing until yeah. I use this tool. This, this tool is neat. The, uh, the current default like non HTTPS version of my site is getting a, a very, very respectable 17 out of 100 at the moment. That, that's and good. It's, it's, it's great. I'm guessing um, 17 out of 100 rather than 20, just saying. Let's go with that. <laughs> um, and the, uh, the HTTPS version is getting a, a solid 51. Nice. That, that's not too bad. Like I'm, I'm only on 62, so I've got some work to do. But the interesting thing with this is it actually picks out things like web framework information. And that's things like, oh, PHP is actually saying this is the version of PHP you support, or you're actually on version oh, X see. of Nginx, which again, I wouldn't have ever thought of looking into because in my head, I wouldn't expect those tools to be sharing that kind of information by default, yeah. let alone it be a security issue anyway. But those three things I found immensely helpful when it's I'm using them basic to guide where I spend all my time and effort and work. Sounds good.